If I asked you for a definition of what love does, and you wrote it out, would the word suffer be included in that definition? What would love look like without suffering? Think about it for a moment. Think of a, a world in which love did not include suffering as an expression and willingness and commitment of that person's love. What would that look like? Would we even call it love? Would you want someone to tell you, I love you, except when, yeah, you cause me suffering. Up until that point, it's love, and afterwards, we're just going to have to be friends. Could you imagine what wedding vows would sound like in a world like that? I promise to love you when things are good. When we're rich and healthy. I promise to love and cherish you with the condition that as long as you don't cause me any suffering physically, emotionally, mentally, then we're good as long as we shall live. It doesn't sound very good because it doesn't work that way. You see, to love is to sacrificially offer oneself up for someone else. And by definition, that would include suffering. To give you some everyday examples of how people show they love someone even when it, or care for someone even when it causes them to suffer, let's take a few in mind. One is, you know, our armed forces, the men and women who serve our country, who love their country, and, and are willing to lay down their lives for its citizens. What about healthcare workers right now? who risk exposing themselves as they treat patients, risking even their own health. Firefighter who runs into a burning building as everyone's running out to pull out the one person who can't get out themselves. Or how about a, a single mom who's working multiple jobs to provide and take care of her kids whom she loves so much. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says it pretty clearly. If you've ever been to a wedding, one day when you, uh, when you get to attend, there are, this is probably the, the most often quoted verse or verses is chapter 13. Sometimes the, uh, the love chapter because it describes love in details. And that's what it says in verse 4 of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love suffers. But then it adds these two descriptors. I'll give you the first one. Love suffers long. You know, I think of a good example of this is um, Jacob in Genesis when he is, he falls in love with Rachel and he offers to work for her hand in marriage. And he strikes a deal with her father. I'll work for you for seven years. Seven long years. And in fact, he's tricked and actually works an additional seven years. So 14 years total. He works for Rachel's hand. And then going back to 1 Corinthians 13, it says, Love suffers long and is kind. When he finishes those first seven years of working for her hand, he says, They felt like a few days because he loved her so much. You know, not only does love suffer, but it suffers at great length. It's not a short term, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's a, it's a constant way of saying you're worth it. I mean it. I love you. And in addition to the length that love suffers, it's also gentle or kind even through the process of suffering so, for so long. It still remains gentle and kind. And isn't this a beautiful foreshadowing of our Savior's love for us? that he would be long-suffering and kind and ultimately he would serve and pay our price for our sins to redeem us. You know, Romans chapter 2 says, it's the kindness of God that leads towards repentance. That it's God's forbearance, his mercy, his patience, his loving kindness 
that leads us to say, I need more of that. I need more of him. And I, I repent. God, you know best. And I'm changing in the ways I'm walking. And now I want to walk in obedience towards you. It's a great foreshadowing that of Christ's love for us. That It says in John's Gospel that no man knows no greater love than this than to lay down his life for his friends. And that's what Christ did for us. You know, when it comes to loving someone and suffering is involved, I think you can look at it one of two ways. When you suffer for loving someone, you could say it's the price I've paid, which is true. I think you can also say it's the proof that I love. The price that I pay, but also the proof I love. Going back to my original question, what would love look like without suffering? Well, if love didn't include suffering, that means there'd be no cross. And without the cross, that means there's no forgiveness. And without forgiveness, that means there's no hope. But that's not the case because God was willing to suffer for us, to forgive us of our sins, such that we have the hope of Christ in us, that He's paid the price, and not only that, but He's redeemed us and made us right with God the Father. In closing, I want to share one verse that I think wraps this up nicely from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. says this, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, that's what trials do, they confirm our love for God, more precious than gold, that's at least that's one aspect, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire. So it's even more precious than gold that the testing of our trials prove our genuineness of faith, that we may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And, in, that in, and that when we see Christ, He will reveal to us the surpassing value of our faith and even the trials that we've gone through. Verse 8, Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. Though you do not see Him, you believe in Him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Why? Verse 9. Obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Ladies and gentlemen, may I encourage you that God loved you, went through a great amount of suffering to the glory of the Father and for Him, but also to reassure and let you know He loves you. That is a great encouragement in today's world with all that's going on. Knowing that His love was true and genuine. And He was willing to suffer. I hope that encourages you guys. I'll see you guys next week.